Okay, so today we're going to be mixing this thing. This is a library track for uh, my friend Craig and his company, Hard Music. Hey, Emily. So, uh, everyone just let me know if there's anything up with the audio or anything like that. Um, but I think everything should be working fine. Okay. So what we're looking at here is just a little kind of schmaltzy waltz um, accordion kind of idea. So we're just going to do a playback of what we've got, and then we're going to kind of see what we want to do and do some cleanup and, and get it ready to get going. Hey, Russell. So let's just take a listen, and we'll take it from there. So lines sound nice. Thanks. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with generally how this track is going. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just to make sure here, I'm gonna come to here. I'm just gonna make a backup of my file, just cause I don't, just in case something goes wrong, for whatever reason. Why is it taking a long time? Um. Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay. Never had that happen before. Okay, well, stop that. Let's copy and paste. Are you really not going to work? Okay. 
let's try this another way. We launch the finder, pull it up. Let's go into projects, hard music, PC4. Let's try that again. I've never had this issue in my entire life. Okay, well, we're gonna live dangerously. Actually, you know what we can do? Project alternatives, new alternative, um, and just go mix, sure. Just as a safety, okay. So yeah, so what we've got here We've got a lot of solo lines. We've got a real mix of uh, recorded stuff and virtual stuff. Um, we've got my bad accordion playing. Um, I'm not really an accordion player, but it was fun to, to practice and try that out. Is that a good fade there? It's a little gap. Let's fix that. Um, <clears throat> and are those all missing like a, a couple of frames? No. Um, We've got my, it wasn't surprisingly not too bad clarinet playing. Um, I was kind of surprised with how that came out. I don't have the best sound, but uh, it does the trick. Uh, I've also got my trumpet playing and I did some French, I used flugelhorn to kind of imitate a French horn sound. I used to have a tenor horn, but I don't anymore. And uh, so I used flugel to kind of give a sense of realism to the French horns because um, yeah if we mix those two together I think with some EQ we can try and make that feel a, a little bit better uh, especially with this line like over here where was it uh, I didn't even put a French horn line I just uh, oh no I did yeah So there's all sorts of little things. Um, and then, yeah, fortunately my violin and my cello sounds are pretty decent for that. And then I got my friend to play guitars. So that was that was a really nice little touch. So the first thing we're gonna do in all this is we're going to do a bit of cleanup. Uh, we're gonna just hide tracks that we're not using, delete tracks that we're not using. Yeah, let's just delete that. Um, I don't need you, I don't need you anymore, so let's just delete that. Uh, we're going to keep the horn because I don't really do a great job. Uh, I don't have a real kind of thing, so we can delete that. Uh, can delete the acoustic guitar, we'll keep the flugels, sure, and... I'll hide this one. Um, I'm gonna keep the accord the the well. I'll I'll hide the fake accordion for now. I'm gonna use this later when I copy stuff over for my sixty second and thirty second versions. Um, yeah, because that'll be I think that'll be helpful. Uh, but I'll I'll hide it for now. I am using piano, so now what I want to do. Let's just look at every track. We'll keep it like that. I don't have piccolo, so let's hide piccolo. I don't have a flute section, let's hide that. Oboe, English horn, clarinet, I recorded live, section I don't need. A bass clarinet I'm using, contrabass I'm not, bassoon section, no, okay. Uh, solo horn I'm not, horn section I am, trumpet, no, trumpet section, no. Contrabass, contrabass, no. Strings, yes. I'm not using any of these ones though, so we can hide those. And now we're going to get to not using xylo, marimba, glock, vibes, celeste, or bells, or crotalis. So we can just hide that. Uh, and I think we're kind of in the realm of like everything that we have here. Yeah, so and maybe what we'll do is we're going to copy that flugelhorn down. We'll mute that. And 
this is my recording track. Sometimes I keep my records on one and my edits on another. So we'll just call that, it's called Flugel, so let's keep it Flugel. Okay, so next up, what we're gonna do is, because part of the challenge of what I wanted, part of the challenge uh, and part of what I wanted to do today was to really try and do it from scratch. No presets, no nothing. I'm not gonna necessarily do that with every single thing, but kind of with everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna just select all my automation, bring it down to nothing. I'll keep the nodes there because I might need them later, but I'm just gonna bring everything down to zero. Um, and we're gonna bring everything up like that. Oops, do everything. Everything, whoops, like that. That send, I'm gonna keep for now, um, for reasons. Uh, there's no automation on volume, so that's fine. Um, yeah, because that I'm likely gonna keep, uh, at least in some form. Well, you know what, no. Let's, let's just, I'll stick to my guns and hey. Why can't I move you down? Okay, you know what? Don't need you at all. Great. That's fine. So I've kept those there. Bring this one down. What is going on? there's just one automation point. Oh, right, I, I did it for a certain swell. Okay, um, yeah, let's turn, whoops, let's keep that, hey, let's keep that general idea there, but we're gonna keep that way down. Uh, and then this guitar, we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, and now let's get out of automation and let's just, bring everything down. And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly bring everything up. Actually, these uh, those buses we need to keep op uh, open so that we can hear what comes out of them. Uh, right. So let's just take all of hey, let's take all of you and just bring y'all down. Not using those. Uh, we'll just no. I'm not using them, so we don't need to do anything. Let's just take all of these and bring them all down. Why am I not seeing my brass tracks? Are they? It's weird, but okay. Don't know why those are separate. Okay. I'm not using these reverbs either. So you know what? Uh, an active bus routing. What is bus three and four? What is sending to bus three and four? Okay, let's turn you off. No send. No send. Nothing else should be sending to three and four. Okay. Right, so I'm not using you. Let's delete you. Let's delete you. And then I can disable read. Yeah, I can, but I'm going to end up using automation anyway. Um, so like I, I, I still want to use it and I want to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start everything at zero at minus infinity and just like bring things up to where the level that we want them. Sometimes when when mixing, you just, uh, you kind of, when you're composing, you start at whatever level and then you kind of mix your entire track with wherever you started mixing, with wherever you started, you start mixing your track with wherever you started composing it. And 
then you're kind of starting from the wrong place. So I want to just put everything to, to, to nothing and slowly bring it all up because um, I think that will be, we'll, we'll make sure we're getting the right level then. So, uh, okay. So now I'm going to turn off this loudness meter. Uh, oh, actually, well, I could have left the loudness meter. Um, I am going to bring up my, I'm going to bring up my Duro waves, Duro stereo. And we're going to just throw this at uh, like that and auto. And we're going to go no, no, like that. So we'll see about, uh, We'll bring, uh, yeah, we'll bring that up when we need, need it. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, Terry, except for cowbell. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't have any, but I'll, I'll put my, I'll put my, my symbol up, maybe. My timpani. I'll just add more timpani. Always more timpani. Um, okay, so then... The next thing I want to do is, uh, what did I do here? Let's just bypass those. I've got a reverb, but what I'm going to do, I wasn't unhappy with it, but I want to start fresh. So I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to just disable what I had, and then I'm going to pull up the default setting. And I'm going to rework this completely. So let's delete these nodes. And we'll take care of that in a sec. And OK, I think we're basically kind of in the ballpark. So now what I want to start with uh, I've got two things at the beginning. I've got these pitzes, uh, which we can't hear because they're down low. So let's just bring them up to full. Uh, okay, and generally I've got two buses here. I've got bus one, which is going to a verb, and I've got bus two, which is going to a delay. I already worked this delay a lot, so I'm gonna just leave it uh, where it is. Uh, you understand uh, mixers, but I could never learn logic. Uh, I mean, it's it's just something that you learn slowly over many years. You know, uh, I mean, I've I started using it in like 2008. Really, I kind of learned it a little bit in 2006, but not really. Um, and you know, 12 years later, I'm. It just it just takes practice. It takes a project to do something in it and to learn it. So, uh, yeah. So now I've got, let's just set these to zero, my reverb and delay. Uh, and then likewise, I've got this guitar. Uh, you had to learn it quickly for a chorus and failed because you can learn it fast. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the other aspect is that a lot of people have different kind of learning curves and different and learn different things differently. Um, so it, it all depends. Um, but, you know, for me, I, I like I said, I learned it just slowly, one step at a time. I remember when I first bought it, I, I actually called Apple's helpline to, like, learn how to do something because I was on a deadline and I didn't know that. I knew about muting tracks, but I didn't know you could mute regions. And so I was like, like, this is this. I had, I had been using Logic for, like, two months or something. I really didn't know much. Uh, and so I actually had to call Apple Help, and they're like, "Yep, so the region's region, the region is muted. You've got to uh, click M or use the mute tool to unmute it." So that was kind of funny, but um, right. So now let's these two things are starting the are starting it. So then let's let's kind of talk about what we're gonna go for here. So let's let's start with our our pits. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, actually, I really do like some of the Pro Tools solo modes for um, inter-cancel and, and solo safe and all that. It's It does have some really good things. But um, So this, this sound uh, has a bit of reverb on it. This is the Spitfire Chamber String. Oh, I've got a compressor on it, so let's take that off for now as well. And actually, let's pull up that durometer just to see what levels we're at. Um, so just to, to, to establish this, um, master preparation, I was told, provide with clean mix, clean final mixes peaking at no more than minus 3 dB. Uh, please refrain from using any maximizing or overuse of limiting on your final mix. Hard will be mastering all the compositions unless otherwise agreed to. So that means I can't go past minus three here. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we do that. I think what I'm gonna aim for is if my um, if my general backing or support tracks, you know, chords and 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 things like that are kind of. Uh, in the minus 27 to minus 24 range. That's probably good because then the melody will bring it up to around minus 20, a little over. And I doubt we're gonna have peaks that are like plus 15. So we'll, we'll have to see. It's not a very percussive uh, piece or something. So let's see what we got. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I do feel it's, I do want to create a sense of like magic um, in this, uh, in this mix. Like I, I want it to feel kind of um, like I want to create a, a, a sense of, 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 of magic that uh, as though this were some kind of Disney or Pixar film uh, and a really sweet moment. So I've got this thing. So I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb uh, to give a bit of a bigger space. So I'm gonna stop it to kind of get a sense of how long that tail is and what I want from that. Maybe a bit, I can go a bit higher. Whimsy. <laughs> um, so, the other thing I should do then is I should also check what I'm doing with my reverb. So I wanted to not go with um, with presets. I wanted to like take some time and explore like building something from the ground up. Um, 2.5 is maybe a touch long, but I don't think that's too far off from what I had in the preset that I liked. So we're gonna start with 2.5. Um, and what I'm gonna do is distance of 50% character. Uh, we're gonna maybe push the character up on the fab filter stuff here. Let's just put this at, at uh, let's put full reverb uh, just for now. Um, and let's just hear the difference. Cause I think this is basically like, I'll make sure you guys get the full signal too. Yeah, um, sparkly. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, all all the major DAWs can do can do all the basic uh, can do what you need. You know, it's I'm using Apple, but obviously many many things all work well, and lots of people. There's a huge Reaper fan base, uh, so uh, you know, all those people can't be that wrong necessarily. So the Fab Filter. Reverb has this character knob, which I'm kind of curious to hear more about. So there's a clean, and then there's chorus, which is a bit too crazy for what we're doing, but let's just listen. So. so that's the clean. Let's just throw it all the way up to chorus just to, just to see. Not hearing too much of a difference. This might not be the best sound to, to listen for it on. So we're gonna just put this at 50 just for now. Hey, I said 50, there we go. And then there's brightness at dark and bright. So let's just hear the difference.
Yeah, exactly. The, the 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 whole point of this is just exploring the the general idea of how these things work. So, um, okay. So the brightness is really adding like a lot of high end, uh, which is kind of interesting and maybe what I'm going for to give that sparkly kind of magic sound. So let's just listen to that again. That's dark. So that's kind of interesting. Let's leave it up there for now, and then we're gonna see we're gonna see how much we want to keep that. Now, generally, with my EQ, um, do I tend to fill in? Yeah, um, I don't know if I necessarily prefer amplifying high end. I think in this case, I I, I, I want some high end to give that sense of like mar magic, sparkle, shimmer, whatever you want to call it. And I feel like the reverb can can do that in a non-intrusive way, because uh, if you just apply high end to all your sources, it's not necessarily that helpful. But to to give that sense of like something, adding a bit of shimmer, I feel like that can be that could be nice. Um, generally, with my reverb, I do like to cut out. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I do like to kind of cut off my low end a bit. So I'm just gonna. Yeah, maybe I'll just do a little bit of a low shelf here, amplifying my desired frequency. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, it, it, it can all kind of depend. Um, uh, so what we're doing now is we're going to, the FabFilter Pro R reverb has two EQ curves in its reverb, which is nice. Um, and so one is you're filtering what goes into the reverb, and then the other is you're filtering what comes out of the reverb. So the blue is before, the yellow is uh, after. Um, and I think I just want to kind of make sure I cut out some of the low end, just so that it's not as, uh, we don't get too much boominess uh, in there. Um, and I think with that brightness knob, I kind of got what I was looking for with, um, I kind of got what I was looking for with uh, the the shimmer, so we'll leave it there for now. I think we're in the general right place. Uh, and now let's just listen to the guitar. Uh, was this on automation? Yeah. So I'm gonna just mute the delay for now. And. Let's throw this in like that. All right, so there's no volume. So let's let's bring it up to zero and see what we get. So that's kind of nice. We could maybe. <laughs> I'm sure it does uh, espresso. I I I, I you know. Uh, I'm just glad I got it for free, you know. Um, uh, I wouldn't pay for it, that's for sure. No, no. Um, okay. So. Okay, yeah, it didn't look like there was a, a first note there, but it's there. Um, I might try putting just a touch more reverb. Yeah, a touch more. That's kind of nice. Now, one thing, these two sounds together, I just felt, oh, I don't need to solo. Uh, I felt these two sounds together were just a bit static and I felt like they needed some more movement. I felt like it, it for the intro to a song, it wasn't necessarily gripping and engaging. Um, usually in library tracks, you want to catch people's attention right away. Uh, but the song still needed a um, kind of, something to ease you in, but so how do you like ease into a track, but also grip, get people's attention. So I thought by adding just a bit of delay to it, I kind of got something that was interesting. So um, here's what, here's the guitar uh, decapitator. <laughs> yeah, not, maybe not quite. I, I like the, the clean sound of this. Um, <laughs> 
So the the delay is just giving us a little bit of like something that the reverb doesn't. It just provides just a bit of movement to what's an otherwise kind of static thing, which I kind of like. So, you know, just for, where am I at here? I'm at minus 16. Just for fun, I'm going to put it at full. So obviously that's a way too much, but I feel like if we bring it down to like, you know, even let's even try it at like minus 13 here. That's not bad, but I do like the idea of it being subtle. So I think that's why I had it more around minus 16. And now, to me, it just, to me, that just gives a nice kind of, a kind of a nice uh, balance of things. So now let's, I, I also tried putting it a bit on the, on the pits. So let's just listen to that. So let's try the same thing, like minus 16. It kind of gives like a little bit of an echo slap back, um, which provides just a kind of a, to me, it's a little more engaging. It provides a, a better sense of like a, a space of some sort that uh, is more than just like playing in a concert hall kind of thing. So it just kind of makes it come alive in a way that I think is interesting. So that's all good. Now I did have it drip uh, dip down here uh, for when the melody comes in. So let's just bring it all the way back up for now uh, and see what happens. talk about those squeaks in a bit so let's let's try and bring the we'll bring in this little percussion in just to give a little bit of a foundation uh, let's just see let's put it up at zero and see what happens so we've kind of got it's it's a really simple drum part it's not about being like giving huge beats or something um, I've just kind of got this this kick and this cymbal. Uh, this is from the Swing More pro by Project Sam, um, and so it's it's not a bad little drum kit. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna move this. Ugh. So yeah, it's really good. And actually this um, this uh, this library also has a, a bunch of um, uh, loops as well. So I did a, another thing here. I'm just gonna, just while we're talking about it, I'm just gonna, you know what? Just, uh, I'm gonna duplicate the track. Let's just get rid of those, bring that up. Let's just, Bring it in for fun, because um, it is a it is a a neat little thing. Let's go into projects, uh, name, project mixes, hard, uh, prime time. Ratty Rumble, and then let's just bring in that. Well, let's just do the, yeah, let's do the full. Done. So I did, an, for the same library, I did another track a while back. Um, come on. And just throw you there, yeah. So, and it's got some really cool stuff. So kind of like a sing, sing, sing vibe. So it's got that and then with nice fills as well. Uh, 
So yeah, it's a really cool library. Um, getting distracted. Okay. So yeah, so the idea of this library, like the idea of this drum sound is not to like make a big drum kit kind of thing, but I did want to kind of give a little, just a little supporting sound. And so with the way this works, I don't necessarily want to put that velocity way up because it gets a little too aggressive. Oh, you heard that one? I couldn't remember. Um, so I don't want to put the velocity up, but I do want it to have more, the kick to have a little more impact. Um, so what I had done, and I'll pull it up again, was I pulled out just a little compressor just to boost the overall level of things without necessarily making it more aggressive. And obviously I'm already at zero dB, so like even if I put it to plus six, I'm not necessarily getting... Oh, I, yeah, if the compressor is bypassed. Can I put it at plus six? It's, it's not quite doing what I want, so... Hey, Nick. Um, from the chat, I can't see exactly which Nick it is, but uh, hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, so with this, I'm gonna just throw in, let's just see here. Oh yeah, I gotta re-enable re it. Let's turn off auto gain. So, uh, let's just bring down the threshold a bit and throw the wet gain up a bit. Oops, not the pan. And always, I, I do, when mixing, it's not always good to, oh, the cross, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Nick, how's it going? Um, so the, the, the main thing um, when doing, uh, when mixing is to never listen in, to like solo is good for just checking some things, but always listen in context, so. <laughs> Third one felt a bit strong. Yeah, that one felt a bit strong. Right. So that's a little bit better, and maybe I'm just gonna bring these down a little bit as well. So let's just see. Yeah, I think that's kind of where we want. And now we're just gonna throw in uh, a bit of reverb to give that a, just a bit more space. That's way too much. So yeah, I think I think that's kind of all right without. Yeah, it's got just a little more of a tail. So now let's listen in context. Why do you make your guitar so squeaky, Terry? Jeez. All right. So let's bring up our melody now. Cause so yeah, our level is kind of where we want. The guitar might be a bit loud, as we can see. Cause now when I add the accordion, I'm gonna be way over minus twenty, which is more than I want to be for pre-master. So because this isn't even the loudest part of the song. So um, so is this automated at all? Yeah. So let's just bring this up and see what we get. Put it at zero for now and see. <laughs> I might, uh, I'm, I'm just having a few issues with my Isotope RX. I might do some Isotope cleanup on that, but. Uh... So, okay. 
that's feeling a bit loud to me uh, again because we're not even at the 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 sort of the loudest part of the song so I'm gonna bring it down just to like minus four and let, let's just listen to dial in a good amount of reverb so let's just you know let's just bring it up to like minus eight or something it's kind of an all right tail so let's just listen to that in context I'll see you Cleo thanks for stopping by that's a little too big uh, it feels like the the accordions in like a giant hall um, it feels like the accordions on like a giant hall and I don't think that that's necessarily what we want we want to feel kind of close to the accordion so let's keep it back a bit and I'm gonna use this nice little feature in logic to just even out some of these uh, volumes. So if you are in flex pitch, flex pitch mode in Logic, uh, you can do your tunings and timings and all that, but you can also adjust the gain of individual notes. So it's just gonna stop that note from poking out as much. Because I'm not a great accordion player. That's a little bit better. So, um, I had tried putting a bit of delay on the accordion as well to kind of similar idea. It's not a very busy accordion line. We're not doing a polka here. So the idea was kind of trying something a little more tame. It just gives a little bit of a, a little bit of a space. So let's dial that back a bit, maybe, because I don't want our lead line to be too kind of processed sounding, but um, it's I still want it to feel kind of natural. Um, so yeah, let's let's take it back and listen from the beginning, just to get a sense of where we're going with this. Okay, kind of interesting. I'm hearing my edits super bad on the accordion now, so I'm gonna try and fix those up a bit. Um, so let's see here. Can I? Hello, hello. Okay, you know what? Let's turn off overlap. No overlap, and just like that let's see if we can move that to somewhere a little more reasonable okay and let's try expanding that fade a bit that's not bad that's not bad okay I hear it a little bit that edit we're gonna see how bad it is. Um, and let's just make my zoom extra big here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Maybe that will be a bit nicer. Let's just try making the fade a bit bigger. nicer. Hey Paul, how's it going? Same thing there. So maybe we just try doing a bigger fade. Not quite. Ooh. I think that's gonna pass a little bit better. Let's just listen to all these. Thanks, man. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I want to do there. That's not bad. Uh, my my accordion playing is bad. Not the edit is, is the edit is okay. So let's just hear that again. Okay, and now we're in the second thing. Any little tiny little things will be covered by the cello and strings and everything else. So. Okay, great. We're kind of where we want to be now. So let's set up the next phase here, which is I'm going to add in Let's bring in this percussion swell. Put them both at, and the harp swell, let's just put them both at zero and see what happens. That's not necessarily terrible, but let's, um, let's take a, let's take a little bit listen with, I, th I feel like they're kind of a bit dry. The symbol's fine, but I think the harp was a bit bland. Yeah, okay. So let's let's definitely do some verb. Let's just bring up minus twelve or something. Excuse me. Let's try going a bit bigger. Let's just. Let's try throwing in that delay as well and see what happens. Um, I've got a feeling that it could. I don't want to put necessarily too much, but a little bit could add something. Yeah, I think something like that kind of does it. And because it, it's over so fast, let's actually try and put it up a little bit and just see in context. Kind of gives a little more of a thing. Yeah. All right. And I realized I forgot these bases as well. So let's bring in my bases. that at zero and see what we get. I already had some verb on it still up, but let's just hear that. We could try pushing that a bit. And run it a bit more. Yeah, something like that, maybe. All right. Um... So next up, let's throw in the other supporting lines here. So the cellos here, uh, we didn't have any things. So let's throw it at zero and see what happens. I 
that's my counter melody. So actually, let's not worry about that for now. Let's hear these. I oh, don't have automation. Okay, so. Um, let's throw in these violas. And they're kind of working with my woodwinds. Just throw everyone up at zero. Good enough. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. So, I forget, did I take off any reverb on this stuff? I think so. Okay, I think we could maybe do a little bit there. So let's, okay. We already got some on the Contra, so let's just throw in a bit more verb. Uh, something like that maybe. My Contra already had it and feels a little bit nicer. Let's see about pushing it up just a touch more. That feels like a nicer decay. Um, also, I should include my violas in that. Said no one ever. So let's try putting up that viola as well a bit. I think we're kind of in the ballpark of what we want. Um, so now let's just listen in context uh, with everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's kind of interesting. I think what we're going to do, though, is we're going to re-examine, um, we're going to relook at our levels soon, because now I'm going to bring in these violins, with because they play with the melody, and I think they're going to be really loud. <laughs> Really, I'm getting performance issues? Okay. I did tests yesterday playing this track and I wasn't having performance issues with streaming and playing back. So hopefully that's not, it might be the issue, but I hope not. Uh, so let's just see here. Where, where are we doing here? <laughs> Yeah, there might be a few crackles in the audio. It's not ideal. Um, it just, it is what it is, I think. Um, it's only so much I can do. So now when these strings come in, I want them to take the, not, to, not that the accordion has to disappear, but I want them to take front and center because we've already heard the accordion do those eight bars. So we don't need to hear it like, 
we're still going to hear it in our head kind of thing. So um, starting in there. So let's we I think we can just bring the accordion down a touch. Um, something like that. We're at minus four, we go to minus seven, sure. These guys in octaves. And I think we could even boost their, their reverb a bit. And ah, the cracks are unfortunate. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be kind of okay. So let's hear them in context with the accordion. Okay, maybe kind of in the right ballpark there. So I like that. Um, I like that, but it's maybe not quite. We're starting to get a bit loud as well, as we can see in our meters. Um, so now, now we might think about what's causing that, because we don't even have our cellos yet. So maybe what we'll want to do. Yeah, so like maybe all of this is just a bit loud and we're gonna just bring everything down a bit from the beginning. So let's actually do that. Hey. Something like that. Then bring you down like two, three dB. Bring you down like three dB. And our guitar is down like three dB. And we could also bring the guitars down a touch on this second part. So we'll bring it down to like minus five and we'll start at like minus two or something. Minus 2.5. So let's just listen to that. <laughs> getting latency problems. There we go. So I think that's way too loud, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring these down to like plus two, uh, maybe plus two. Or actually, no, let's bring them down to zero again. And let's throw on a compressor just to control their dynamics, but still make sure that they feel heard and are present. So let's just hear this. Um, This way we're going to get just a little bit more, and I'll copy it over to the violin twos. Uh, 
uh, and let's just hear that. Okay. So two things I want to talk about right now. Uh, one is our accordion is currently front and center. Uh, I've done some panning. I didn't undo it all, uh, but nothing crazy. So for example, the strings are naturally panned in the, inst in the virtual instrument. Uh, so we can just hear them like, like if we just listen to these violins. They're a little left. They're a little on the left side to begin with, so that's fine. Um, but I think to balance that a bit, especially because as a production library, this is going to be um, important things here. Where's uh, where's my accordion? There we go. Actually, is there a? No, there isn't. Um, especially because it's in kind of for use in film and television. I'm gonna actually try and keep stuff out of the center as much as possible. So to balance the melody being on the left and the violins, I'm gonna put the accordion a bit to the right, just to kind of give a, a sense of the two, making it feel bigger in scope. Um, uh, as accordion doesn't usually have a traditional place in the orchestra or something. So, ah, whoops, that's not what I wanted. So if I, solo the accordion and solo my strings we can kind of get a sense of so that kind of works uh, let's clear the solos and let's just hear if it sounds weird at the opening as well We could ask ourselves the same question of the guitar. Uh, should the guitar just be front and center? I think in this case, to give a little bit of a sense, like if we had orchestra as one ensemble and then kind of a, a separate ensemble of like the band kind of thing. So we could have like guitar, accordion, drums as like their own thing that we kind of mix as an, their own ensemble in the stereo image. We could say we have guitar on the left, accordion on the right, and drums kind of taking the overall space. Um, so I think that could give us a balance to the accordion on the right here so it doesn't feel uh, imbalanced. So that was the first thing. I wanted to talk about panning a bit. I already did the panning on the the woodwinds a bit, so they, they sound kind of nice, right? So. Where are they? Yeah, we can kind of see just a little le light left and right panning. Even if that's maybe a bit more drastic than what it might sound in the orchestra, I feel like it just, it gives a little bit more of a sense of space and in, in the orchestra they're fairly centered but it just it creates more of a, a bit more of an image which is nice in the context of a um of a virtual orchestra so uh so the final thing that we've got to do while while we're working here is we've got a oh yeah the last thing was the way these violins kind of end is just feeling a bit dry <laughs> So 
So I'm going to pull up an old trick here. Um, sometimes I do this by hand, but I'm going to pull up my iPad and I've got it for you here as well. Just give me a second. So if I pull up my iPad, yeah, MacBook Pro. All right. So what I'm going to do, if I go sends and let's make this uh touch and violin two as well touch oh, it's not latch touch so now what we're going to do is we're just going to automate the reverb reverb automation right at the end yeah exactly you called it Russell. so for those that don't know it's a nice little trick to just you can just automate a bit of reverb at the end to just let the natural note kind of carry over and this is as true in um uh in you can do this in traditional acoustic recording uh, as well as digital production. So it's it's a it's a nice little trick. So if we pull up our automation here, we can kind of see what I did. I might just manually oh. I'm just going to manually get rid of that one just to make it a little more natural. Uh, send one verb and same thing there. So now if we actually just listen to these soloed. It just makes it just kind of gives it a more natural it's maybe not more of a natural tail, but it just it it blends in a little bit better with the track. So an ambient delay. Yeah, I mean that's those those are options too. Um, I think I'm okay with what I have for now. I want to hear what I'm about about. I want to hear what I did in context with the with the next melody, and with the the other thing. Yeah, like the reverb works well enough. I want to hear it in context with everything else now because um, here, I gotta find a better place for this. Um, well, whatever. If you can't always see it, so be it. Or actually, let's just make it. Oh, well, that's really small. <laughs> I can't even see that. Uh, but you know what? Maybe that's good enough because I, I I know what I'm aiming for is right here. So maybe that's good enough. And then I'm just gonna I'll just move myself over a bit. There we go. Easy. So yeah, I think that's good enough. So now what I want to do is I want to bring in my cellos. Um, let's bring you up to zero and let's bring you up to zero, right? Oh no, you were automated. So let's bring that up. Let's just bring them both up to zero for now and hear this in context. So I've got these cellos doing a counter melody. Um, So we've got a we've got two things here. We've got my Tina Guo solo cello, where sh this instrument brings a lot of like personality and character to the sound, and then I've got the orchestral section kind of underneath um, that just provides more of the body to it. Um, so the two together kind of work well. Um, so let's just listen to the Tina Guo on its own. I have an EQ on here. I'm gonna leave it as is because I'll, I'll show you what it does though. Uh, so this EQ, without this EQ, 
I find this sound to be a bit bright. Um, all this stuff, I just find it to be a bit bright. So I just try and take off a little bit of the high end. Um, that's just something I find with this instrument uh, and the mix that they did for it. So that's that's just my personal thing. Yeah, okay. And just for fun, we could kind of do something similar here uh, with with our with our reverb send. Like that. So now let's hear this one on its own. I think we could boost the reverb. I think we did that on the violins. I think we could do it here as well. It's just going to help mask a bit of a few of those um, those legato transitions that can make it sound a bit fake. Um, I really wish it wasn't clicking and popping. Um, I think it just has to do with me streaming, so that's unfortunate, um, but it'll give you an idea. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a little bit nicer. We're not losing too much. Like We've got definition and clarity from, from Tina's uh, instrument, so then I think the sum total will be nice. <laughs> Someone's disagreeing with me. Okay, let me just see something here. Um, I don't see any issues there. I threw this at like, yeah, it's just not happy. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna try something. Let's turn those off. Maybe that's gonna make my life a little bit easier. I hope I don't crash. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get rid of a few instruments that I'm not using. And hopefully that's going to lighten our load just a bit. Um, why is it so... I? Fairly sure I turned this up at like four buffers, right? Four buffers, yeah. Okay, well, let's try it like this and see what happens. If there's really an issue, we'll, we'll try something else. Uh, let's come back to this. Yeah. Sorry if you weren't able to see what was going on, but um, all this to say, I, I had, uh, was just doing some work in where does this bring me actually? Let me just see something. Yeah, that brings me to that. And I'm not able to change. Am I able to change that offhand? No. Okay, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so if, if needed, I'll show you what's going on on my PC, but let's just keep going for now. So. <laughs>
Okay, and let's just bring in this uh, clarinet. Let me just make sure, yeah, I can. I would help if I actually brought it in. So let's just put it at zero and see what happens. I do have a bit of reverb on it. Let's just hear how we like that. That's not too bad. Let's just try it like this in context. Uh, my system, well, my PC is a uh, quad core i7 6790 or whatever um, from a few years back, uh, 32 gigs of RAM. I think I was just having, I don't know if it's RAM related or processor related. It didn't seem like my processor was going crazy, but uh, it is also like outputting converting 1080p at 60 frames a second. So I'm trying to cut it some slack. Um, so. Yeah, the, the task manager won't always show, but uh, VE Pro kind of gives can also give a sense. I don't know how much those two are related or not, but um, it seemed like it might be that. But it wasn't it wasn't like cr like freaking out or something. So um, that's why I thought maybe the the RAM because when my all my instruments are loaded, it can be quite full. So if it doesn't have the RAM that it needs to process the video, etc. So or the if it's if it's trying to share too many things it can get bottled up or if it's like paging between disk and ram and stuff so it's it's who knows and m maybe actually even just because i'm also recording recording this to disk in the background you know what well i'll let it go for now if there's really an issue i'll try stopping the recording to disk and maybe that'll help but <laughs> So presumably I would want to place the clarinet kind of where other clarinets go in the context of orchestra. Um, this isn't a very classical clarinet sound. Um, this is a little more heavy on the vibrato for kind of a solo in a band kind of thing, but um, we'll pretend it's in the orchestral position. <laughs> Those last two notes are a bit quiet. I'm going to try boosting them with the same trick I showed you before. Um, yeah, that's feeling a lot better. See you, Paul. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. sure I'm crazy about how that clarinet sound is just kind of ending so I'm gonna do a bit of the reverb trick on that one as well so I'm I've been doing it with my iPad but I'm gonna just show you for the sake of it how to kind of do it quick and dirty um, with um, 
with just regular automation. So you could just do something like that. Now, something like that. That sounds that sounds fine. I might even just boost, maintain that just a little bit longer and maybe just bring it up a little bit sooner. That's good enough. So now, wait a second. Right, so now my accordion came back up, but I really think I want to keep it kind of where it was um, because I've got two other things here. I've got my cello. This is no longer a counter melody, it's just a supporting bass line. And then I've got the violin here in, whoa, no, 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 no. I've got the violin in counter melody, so. So uh, violin, we're going to put kind of hard left as though it's in the orchestra. Again, that also kind of works well with the accordion on the right, I think. So that's one thing. Right now we don't have any reverb, uh, extra reverb on the violin. I think there's a bit of built in. Not too much actually. So you know what, let's throw some in the verb. Let's make sure I'm saving as I go. So let's just throw it up to there, just here. It sounds kind of nice. So let's listen in context. So we've kind of done the first half of it now. So what I'm going to propose is that we just listen back to the first half and see what we think about it. So.
Sorry, I muted the my mic for the playback. Um, right, okay. So what we're doing then is, I like how it sounds overall. Uh, we're getting a maybe a touch on the loud side for for mastering, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. It's 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 mostly, well, we're maybe getting a touch on the loud side. But the general shape of what I want to do is. We, you know, we start quiet, we build up, we have that first swell with the, with the strings and harp, we come back down with a little intimate moment, and then in this bridge section, we're getting to this part where I want it to feel like a breakout, right? We're, we're going from, we're going from this little intimate thing, we're changing keys, we're going into a new world, we're getting brass for the first time, we're, we're really kind of going into like brass chorale with string support, um, so I want this, I, I want to make sure that we aren't too loud that by the time we get here, we lose that, that kind of big shift. So that's, the, that's kind of the main thing I'm thinking about when I'm considering levels for this next part. <laughs> So let's bring in our horns. I'm not necessarily against where the strings are right now, but we'll see if they need to be that loud. So are any of these on automation? Yeah, my trombones are. Okay, so let's bring, let's just bring everyone up to zero and then we'll adjust. Uh, and I've got my fake horn. Uh, so we'll bring that up as well. And speaking of which, so let's just listen to what we have. So as you can see, we're already quite loud. Uh, I've also, I don't even have the timpani and stuff yet. Was I hearing basses? I was, okay. So technically I did have all my strings, right? Yeah, okay. Did I have everything here? I didn't hear my bass bones, why not? Oh, that's why. Right. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that in a sec, but the first thing I wanna do is I wanna try and match my horns to my flugel. Cause uh, one of these is not like the other, that's for sure. So let's see then. Um, I think we can make that work. The first thing I want to do is I want to try and get the placement correctly. So do I have any panning on my horns? No. So where are my horns all to start? They're kind of shifting from left to center a bit. Uh, kind of like the overall sound is feeling a bit center, but the drier part of the sound is, is definitely coming a bit from the left, which is to be expected for orchestral. Um, I might actually favor this just a little bit more to the left just to really differentiate it. So now let's add the flugelhorn in, same kind of idea. And let's just... Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take an EQ and I'm going to try and, um, so the part, the using a flugelhorn for a horn isn't bad, um, isn't necessarily too bad if you're doing um, kind of a more rounded sound. But this is a slightly more cuivre kind of kind of thing. It's big. It's it should have a, a a big thing. I tried putting a mute in my flugel to kind of make it 
feel like that, it wasn't really working. So we're gonna try and futz around with some EQ to really make it blend better. It's not necessarily too bad. So let's try and hear that in context. So it's kind of working. I might have been a bit, bit heavy-handed on the, uh, on the EQ there, but okay. You guys are starting it just a touch too early. And I think what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually bring down the flugel a bit and more of the natural horns for a better blend. So we're just going to boost those a bit. Okay, I'm going way too hot on these. So I think actually it's more of a question of maybe turning some other things down. So let's let's not worry about that. Let's try turning down my strings. Let's not do that. Let's go volume. Uh, just do something like that. Uh, bring you all down by, and let's go copy and then let's go come over here let's go let's go into volume paste whoops ah what am i doing uh and Let's just try something similar. Actually, you know what? Keep hitting the wrong button. Hey. Okay. Right. So let's just fill you in like that. like a background process I'm not aware of. Okay, you know what might help actually? Let's do it like this.
Okay, we'll come back to my bad clarinet playing in a second. Um, so let's bring this up to... Oh. I believe it was something like that. <laughs> Yeah, and let's also bring this timpani up. Let's just set it to zero, and we'll see why this is important. then maybe I want to bring some of these just down a bit. And the horn section too. Okay, so while we're hearing that clarinet, we're gonna bring up my other clarinet. Let's just hear these in context. All right, let's also give these just so this clarinet was at like minus 10 I think let's put this clarinet at like minus 15 or 16 so now when they're together they don't sound like they're in exactly the same spot uh, so now one thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna double check this edit I've got here which is not great It's going to be fine in context, but it really is bothering me. Once I bring everything in, I think it's going to be okay, but let's just bring in the violin for now. Let's maybe bring that up to zero. Oh, I'm also missing my piano. So let's bring that probably like minus six. So this is like a supporting. sure how I want to handle panning on this like I don't know if I want I don't want this to necessarily be like um like an orchestral piano I feel like I'd want it to be more kind of part of that accordion 
a solo band, you know, like. So I'm not sure exactly how I'd want to handle that. It could be kind of like the glue, like with drums and everything, but so we'll leave it where it is for now. So I'm going to save. And one thing I'm going to do quick here is I'm going to where is it? Nope. Uh, configure track header, track header components. Let's add in alternatives. I'm just going to go duplicate. I just want to have a backup because I'm going to do make a new region of this because I'm going to do some processing on it. So function uh, select functions selection based processing. Now, my clarinet is very clicky, um, so I'm going to de-click it. Normally, I do this a little more precisely in uh, in RX, but we're just going to do a general thing. I'm having some compatibility issues. So let's just hear... Let's go with multiband random clicks higher frequency we'll say sensitivity three let's just see what this gets us apply really uh, this is what I don't like about logic compared to Pro Tools um, I want to just see something. Let's make sure it add effect tail just in case. Yeah, that's probably better. Okay, just as a safety. So call that good enough I think because I think in context it's going to be more than fine um, and now we're gonna have to get rid of that so that have the same delay <laughs> also need I also need my cello here Yes, I do. I really like the the piano doing the the roll up here. So let's just try bringing all of those out a little bit with velocity. Let's actually do a slight, oops, volume thing here. And you know what, actually, I'm going to just do this through, here, I'll bring it up. I'm going to just show it on the iPad here, volume. 
So. I might bring this up for the end as well, just while I'm here. Okay. I think that was generally in the ballpark. Um... Which horn do you mean? Uh, but but which part on on the at the end here or like this this middle part? Yeah, I mean. Like I said, I I'd kind of wanted to to blend in a bit more with the cuivre sound, but I may have been a bit dramatic. Where the solo violin hits, there's there's no horn there. Oh well, there's there's no flugel there. The solo violin is clarinets. I do have this horn here in the low. Oh, it's down low. Make sure that I get my bass clarinet in there. You know, I really don't like these BBC clarinets. They're really not great. So you know what I'm going to do? I'll just throw it here and I'm going to go duplicate. Sure. And let's open this up and let's bring in clarinets, bass clarinet, uh, standard bass clarinet should be fine. Ah, I shouldn't be showing the iPad anymore. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna use that then. Uh, and let's go this base clear. And let's try moving that up there. Whoa, why do you sound so weird? Okay, you know what? Well, let's just mute that and let's just play it in. And 
I just did a one beat on that. Yeah, I didn't do the held. Oops. So the, one of my main issues with the VSL clarinet stuff or the VSL library generally, like this is the older library, is there's very little dynamic range and it can, the, the velocity shifts can be pretty intense. So what I'm gonna do then is, I'm gonna keep it quieter but just really boost the signal. So let's just see. I might make that just a touch longer and then throw in a more natural fade as a something like that. And I'm going to see if I like the reverb on this. So what I might do then, and I'm going to try, so normally my reverb sends are post fader, well, post pan, post fader, po post everything. So what I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to send it pre fader because I'm liking, I don't want to mess with my reverb on anything else. So I'm going to bring it down a bit for the dry and I'm going to boost the reverb signal here. <laughs> So this way it gets more of a rich sound. That's kind of what I'm digging. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have, where that note sticks out, I'm just gonna put in just a little bit of a, just deck it a bit. Something like that, and then what's why are you sounding weird? Yeah, that's kind of in the ballpark there. But actually I'm gonna extend this note a bit and just do something a little more like that yeah so I really want this solo cello to, to to come to the front here, so let's try boosting that a bit. The second part of it seems to be doing okay, just the first few notes there I want to really sing out.
So I think I'm just going to do a little bit of a dip on this strings for the end here. Right, that's not what I wanted. That's more of what I wanted. do I have to do here? Oh, I'm missing my accordion. That's what's going on. I don't know what all those nodes are anymore, so we're just going to get rid of them. That's fine. So let's just bring that up to where it was. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting really close here. We're getting really close. Um, the one thing I wanna try and really balance at the end here is there's a lot going on for melody. A lot of stuff is trying to take attention. Um, and I think we're really gonna have to balance that. So we've got, um, I think these are the main melody. Let me get rid of my giant breath. That was kind of funny. Just, whoa, 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 whoa. So, These are my main melody. So that's that. And then I've got counter melody and trumpet. We'll throw in flugel for the end there. Um, we've got counter melody and trumpet and violins, I believe. Ah, I, we didn't have trumpet because it was muted. Let's see if this is too loud. So yeah, we've got the violins and trumpet. So 
So I just feel like all these things together are just, just taken up a lot. So just have to find a way to balance all these things. <laughs> So this is the only place of the trumpet. Now, my feeling about the trumpet is I wanted to have that kind of big orchestral sound, but it's hard getting that big orchestral sound when I close mic, right? Like I record like here in front of the microphone. So it's, it's a little bit tricky. So I'm panning a bit to the right. It's usually, we're usually center to off center right. That sounds like a multi-panner XY for that. Couldn't see about that. Um, do we do we have something like that? Like, like I I don't usually use one. Uh, do you do you know of one in Logic in particular uh, that does that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, it's possible I have something like that. I just, I don't usually use it. I mean, I'm curious actually, if I pull out the, not tonal balance control, if I pull out the, uh, is it the meter tab? I, I don't always use this. Yeah, the visual mixer. If I throw in the visual mixer, like, I'm curious, oh, leave me alone. Okay, good. Okay, let's, let's no plugin. Let's throw in the meter tap. Let's see if this can help us. So the isotope meter tap mono great. So this creates a signal that we can then control something else from it. I, I don't use this too often, so I'm gonna be kind of curious. I thought, start mixing up, add a stereo and sense of neutron or mixed tap. Oh, I have to add a stereo with it. That's why, okay, right. Um, so then let's add in uh, meter tap, mono to stereo. Let's do that. No? No, the surround panner is really not going to work because that's a multi output thing and I'm not working multi output. So, uh, okay, let's just do this another way then. Let's just go isotope. Let's just, let's just try something because if I've got these things, I may as well use them. So I'm going to throw in neutron two. And there we go. Okay. I'm just making sure that there's nothing going on equalizing or compressing. What goes in goes out. No, that's not going to work.
maybe that's kind of working. Um, so for those who don't know, the uh, Isotope's latest offerings kind of give you like fuse, neutron. Um, you can basically all their plugins talk with one another, and so you can have their channel strip plugin neutron on all your tracks, for example. And then they've got you can throw on like your your master bus or whatever, what's called the visual mixer. And so if I had it on like multiple channels, I could actually like see all my different instruments. Like here it is, trumpet one, and then I could add in trumpet two over on the left or the guitar. And I, you know, you can do like this visual mixing where you can make something uh, louder, quieter, to kind of give a sense of distance, right, left, and then how big that source is. So if you make it like extra wide, it becomes much more stereo. So like just a it kind of that's obviously a bit crazy so we're not going to do that we're focusing the sound a little bit more there um so it kind of just does like a, a slight like shifting in place a little bit which is it can it, it can add a little something nice So is there just too much going on here? I had the clarinets and octaves. I'm not even sure if we need them both. I do like hearing the piano melody. I feel like it's not sticking out enough. What I'm gonna do it's not exactly a dynamic performance. I'm going to just do a little thing where I do, 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 MIDI transform fixed velocity. And I'm just going to fix it, sure, at 100. Oh, no, 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 no. Not like that. Operate only. There we go. So this way I can just control these very evenly. That might be enough. So I think the melody's coming out fine. The question is, is the counter melody, like is the, are the violins and the trumpet kind of bouncing out the way I want? I feel like I'm not hearing the shape of the violin melody the way I want. Ah, what am I doing? Oh. Something sounds funny there. That's why. Okay. So my second violin is 
because of voice crossing, my second violin's just kind of masking the, the melody a bit, which is not good. So uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to just have the second violin maybe double that C. Or the, the F, rather. So let's... Hey. Uh, yeah, something kind of like that. Okay. Let's just... All right. Well, hope it's hopefully it's back. Okay. Okay, let's try and go through this one last time. Here we go. All right. Uh, okay, so let's just do one last thing. We're gonna do a couple last things. Uh, so, first things first, on a piano, I'm just gonna bring up the iPad. So I'm gonna take my sense here. I'm just gonna, I think I 
got rid of that at the beginning, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Send one verb, absolute. Yeah, I got rid of that at the beginning. So I'm just gonna re-add that back. Um, yeah, it's it's complicated. <laughs> uh, believe me, I've 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 thought about it. I've looked into it a lot. Like technically, I have one, but it just gets a bit complicated. Okay. There, I think that's kind of a nice ending. So that was one thing to do. Um, another thing to do was, yeah, that works as intended. Um, I wanted to bring up this flugel at the end. Uh, there's no, do I have, I do have flugel elsewhere, so I don't want to necessarily ruin the mix over there. Just want this to come out just a little bit more. those first few notes to come out. So the, the observant ones among you might notice that my master is clipping a bit by 2 dB. And that is, generally speaking, not good. I'm not going to worry about it right now because basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through my track and just lower everything kind of globally. Um, a little bit just to, to bring that down into reasonable levels and then after that I'm gonna I'll make sure there's a limiter on to kind of catch anything that uh, shouldn't be that shouldn't be there like I, I could I could in theory do that with a limiter I, I mean let's just see what happens right like if I throw on a fab filter L2 I generally like to do it before that stage, like we had to be below minus three, right? So let's see what just happens if I just do that. Um, and it was mostly in the uh, the end section here. So let's bring that back up and take a look. <laughs> So technically that would probably cover my needs, but I'm probably gonna go through and just bring everything down a bit to make sure I'm within the level that I want to be. Um, <clears throat> like maintaining where I want to be generally with, with, with regards to my peaks and my uh, <coughs> R RMS. But I still get, I still want to keep that general sense of dynamic range that I have. Like, I like that we start 
uh, really kind of quiet here. And then we can get really big by the end. So that's something I'm going to play with a bit afterwards. Uh, the next thing I've noticed was this viola line is getting a bit lost. That's doubling what the clarinets have, and I'm not hearing it at all. So I want to make sure that that line is nice. So I might just boost it like a lot just to kind of get it hearing. Uh, what's stage one? If anything, I think my clarinets are just a bit loud there. Let's throw on the volume. Oh, I didn't even... When did I lose my clarinets? At the end. can add depth but it's not reverb I do feel like yeah, let's combine these things make sure there's no problem with Velocities overlapping. If we go to modulation, not velocities, but uh, my CC. Right, so there was a little bit of funny business. So I'm going to just. I'm just going to bring all of this up, I think. So in that case, I think the next thing I want to do is So let's let's do this another way. And OK, 
Okay, and I think I'm gonna just calm down that fade at the end. Something like that. And then let's just hear what's going on in my cellos and violas. My cellos should be the full tube. Um, oh no, that's why my cellos aren't the full two bars, right? Okay, well, let's. And let's just do it to the violas as well. But let's, for the violas, let's also calm that fade down a bit as well. And touch. I lost my bases by the end. That's awkward. Okay. Uh, let's just get rid of all that. Thought it was sounding a little thin. Yeah, it's funny actually. I think um, I started at the beginning of the mix uh, with. Um, I started at the beginning of the track for the mix because I wanted to find like my reverb sounds and things like that. But I think I should have started with the loudest part. Um, so, because then I would have avoided the, the problem of having to go back and bring things down. But uh, I think I'm definitely in the ballpark there. The last thing I wanted to check was the timpani. Just feels like it's getting a bit lost in the mix. It's just about getting that kind of color and character a bit. So let's just try bringing up the volume. <laughs> I know I said I'm going to bring everything down, but... kind of getting a bit of the attack and the the general sound but we're not getting it's not too bombastic or something so that's that's nice 
Okay, I think what we're gonna do, because we're in the general bar ballpark of where I want to be, I'm gonna do one last listen with uh, my monitors and not the uh, headphones. So I'm gonna mute my mic and we'll take some last notes and I think we're gonna call it there. Yeah, so let's try that then. Once more from the top, I'm just gonna throw on that limiter for now just as a simple kind of thing um, all right here we go Ooh. Uh, one last important thing about mixing is that you always maintain the loudest. Uh, you you always listen at the same level. Um, don't turn your volume knob up and down at all. Like that's because if you're constantly changing your reference, you don't know what's going on. So either never touch your your level. Have it clearly indicated where on your interface your level should be. Um, or ideally your interface has a stepped gain uh, or a stepped controller so like you can see that um, right now my oh maybe you can't actually see it there let's move my face out of oh I've got the iPad still showing so you can see right now I'm at minus 26 on my monitor um, and I can move it in clicks and it's always going to be the same so that makes it really easy for me to make sure I'm always listening at the exact same level. Because uh, if you don't, you're going to make adjustments based on, like, your your adjustments won't be relative. You're you're gonna you're gonna make adjustments on things that might not need adjusting. So what I generally do in my setup um, is I if I'm mixing on monitors or headphones, I set a, I set the level and I don't touch it. Um, fortunately, when I'm working on monitors, I can um, I can set my level and it's got stepped gain, so I can always control that easily. And then the next thing that I have is I've got a button here. Does it show somewhere on here? Uh, I've got a button, and you'll see. Let me see if I can show the control room. Yeah, I can do the control room here. So I can control what my dim amount is. I've got a button to just hit the dim of minus 20 dB. Sometimes it's very convenient to just not be listening at a full volume all the time and to listen at a quieter volume to get a sense of um, elements that stick out or um, yeah, to get a sense of elements that stick out or what, what is sticking out and what is hidden. Uh, to just So if you want to just listen at a quiet level, a good dim feature if your interface has one is great because it's a it's an easy way to always have the same lower level and go back to the same higher level so I've got mine set at minus 20 I've got a button to enable it if I want and then it blinks so that's um, just a little tip so I'm gonna listen on thing my monitors are the Dynaudio BM 6 A's uh, the first gen so yeah Here we go.
Okay, so um, it's always going to be very different listening from headphones to monitors, so I'm glad I did. Some things that I feel like were really obvious to me that weren't as apparent on headphones, the accordion at the beginning is quite loud, I think, so I'll want to bring that down uh, in relation to everything else. Uh, I also just realized that we weren't hearing the big brass at the end. This is a really nice, rich, full sound that we add. So we should bring that in. Just let's get it in roughly in place. Um, let's just let's just start it there, and let's just hear what that sounds like. <laughs> could come up a bit I feel like this reverb could also come up a bit So yeah, that's kind of nice. Let's just hear it in context with these. So that was another thing. I think that's better now. Um, what else was there? Just make. I'm, I'm just gonna make sure that nothing else is muted. Well, there you go. That's. Not used to doing that. So let's just. Get rid of all those. Those aren't muted. We've got that. We've got that. We got that. Got that. We got that. I think we've got everything here. Got that. Oh, wait a second. Did I? No, it's there. Yeah. Okay. So let's make sure here we've got everything we need. Yeah. Ah.
All right, I think we're basically where we want to be. Um, I'm getting a little, my, my mind and ears are getting a bit tired, so I think I'm going to call it here. But um, I hope this was interesting and helpful. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit my process about mixing these things. Uh, next steps for doing this, like I said, I'd want to just bring some of the overall levels down. Um, because it's going to be mastered, I don't want to really apply any limiting or anything like that if I don't have to. Um, and I'd rather make sure I'm not going over and then just bringing down the master bus after. That doesn't it's probably fine in the digital world because it's processing at 32 or 64 bit internally, but like realistically, I should all, you know, we should, it's good to aim to just do it properly the, the first time around. So I'm just going to go through and bring everything down a bit. It's not that many tracks. Um, so that's basically that, uh, after that, the next thing I've got to do is I want to, I'm going to color code everything so that, uh, how did I do it? Uh, if we go basically, uh, my accordion is always the melody. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make my melody, I'm going to use colors I don't have too much of. So I'm going to make my melody light blue, something like that. Um, I might duplicate my piano to keep the melody and background notes separate. Uh, in a library track, it's helpful to you. I'll, I'll, I mean, I can show you here. Um, I'm supposed to provide three full mix, uh, three mixes, basically a full mix, which is everything, an underscore and a narrative. Now they both are a bit different. The underscore mix um, removes a top line melody. So that's an example of where I could still have the bass, the, the left hand of my piano without having the right hand. Um, and that rather than like going in and, and uh, muting those notes, uh, it's easier to just duplicate the track and just mute the region. Um, and then the narrative mix is, is even like removing even more distraction. It's um, it would be removing any kind of, I, I, I even take it to the point of removing um, sort of supporting material, anything that's too rhythmic, anything that steals attention. So it's really just kind of the bare bones. So I would, I'm going to go through and color code all these things into melody, uh, backing or supporting tracks, uh, rhythmic elements and percussive elements. That's usually how I do it. Or maybe bass as well. Uh, I, I try and find a good balance of that. Um, so I'm going to go through and, and color code each one because then what I can do is, let's say all these were melody, right? Um, or they're, they're all backing or whatever. If I want then, in Logic, I can go right click um, and go select, uh, select same colored regions, Shift C. I can solo them and then export that, just those regions um, uh, to make my stems. And then this way I don't have to like have duplicate buses and create all this com complex routing. I can just mix everything as a, as a two track and then I just solo what I want. Uh, this is also another reason that um, you don't want to necessarily rely on compressors or limiters at certain phases uh, if um, or on the on the master bus necessarily. I mean, you're going to do a full mix, but um, if you your compressor might not engage on your four stems separately, but on the sum total they do. So then, if if a mixer pulls in your four stems, um, if a mixer pulls in your four stems and plays them back, he won't have that compressor and they will they might clip or they might peak so that's not ideal either that's why it's good to just go through and reduce everything um to an appropriate level rather than counting on just bringing it all down at the end so that's that's what that is um yeah so that's basically the next step um and then basically the track is done well, good. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, I hope everyone did. It's um, 
Uh, oh, I'm, I'm glad you liked it too, Simo. It's, yeah, it, it is what it is. And then, oh yeah, and then the next step is I've, now that I've done the mix and my automation is where I want it, I get to copy all the regions over to my 60 second, my 30 second, and my 15 second. And just because I've got students from the class here. Um, oh, hey, Craig. <laughs> um, yeah, so because uh, because I'm doing uh, the 60 second and 30 second, you'll see I've got hard marks for out. So these are really like, this starts at 240 and then it is out at 340. So I've got to make sure that when I export, it's just this region and that my audio is out there. Um, and then same thing with my 30 seconds. So I've, I've kind of copied over my, my, um, my sketch piano. <laughs> and you can hear the, the fake accordion, which I'm so glad I did the real one. Um, so the next step is once I've mixed it all to copy the appropriate things over, I've got a few like little rearrangements to do. Um, so for example, because the, the, the timing of the phrases didn't work out properly for the full 30 seconds, I do a little intro where I throw in this, uh, this little intro with the harp and a cymbal swell. So little things like that. Um, that's not on the original track, but I do that on the on the edits. Um, so I've just got a few little things to adjust like that. So that's about it for doing library music. Um, yeah, but I'm really happy with how this one's turning out. So I'm looking forward to finishing them up. I know Craig is looking forward to me finishing them up. <laughs> um, took a little bit longer than I wanted, but uh, I'm really happy with how they're turning out. So hopefully when you hopefully when you put in the time, they get placements and then you get royalties. So that's that's the big hope. So I'm going to call it there. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming by. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll see about if I do another live stream like this for the other tracks um, or if I've just got to hunker down and just get them out because um, uh, obviously I do get a little bit distracted, but, you know, it is kind of the time. So I, I do have to spend the time doing it anyway. So it looks like I'm dropping frames again. Okay. Well, we're going to call it there. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk soon. And have a good day, everyone. Bye.